Installing NVIDIA drivers on Eon Desktop, formerly known as OpenSUSE Eon, is not as straightforward as on other Linux distributions due to the unique way this distribution is built. In this video, I'm going to lead you to all the necessary steps to configure the system and install the driver. Also, this guide does not apply to Kalpa, Leap or Tumbleweed and is intended for Eon Desktop users only. System Setup Before we can install the NVIDIA driver, we need to pre-configure our system to ease up the process. The first thing we want to do is to configure Transactional Update and Cyber. Setup Transactional Update Open up a terminal and copy the file usr slash etc slash transactional dash update dot conf to slash etc as follows sudo cp slash usr slash etc slash transactional dash update dot conf slash etc slash then open up the file with wim sudo wim slash etc slash transactional dash update dot conf Press I on your keyboard to enter edit mode and navigate to the line showing cyper underscore auto underscore import underscore keys equals zero. Remove the hashtag at the beginning of the line and change the zero to a one. Press escape cologne x to save the file. This needs to be done so transaction and update will auto accept the NVIDIA driver repository keys as the driver is downloaded from an official repository run by NVIDIA. Also, it can happen from time to time that NVIDIA updates their repository keys at any given time, which in return would break the auto-update process of Eon without the user knowing. Setup Zipper Even though the first configuration was somehow about Zipper 2, there is still some more Zipper config we need to adjust. Open up a terminal window and enter sudo wim slash etc slash zip slash cyber.conf. Afterwards, navigate to the line showing hashtag auto agree with license equals no. Press I on your keyboard and remove the leading hashtag. Then also change the no to a yes. Press escape colon x to save the file. This configuration is required to allow Zipper to auto agree to the NVIDIA end user license agreement as this is denied by default. In return, this would break the auto update of Eon Desktop as well. Therefore, we allow Zipper to accept the license by itself. Setup TPM this step is entirely optional and if you have installed Eon Desktop using the fallback mode disk encryption, you don't need to follow these steps as well. In any other case, I'd like to mention that after installing the NVIDIA driver, we will invalidate the TPM predictions. Which means if your system is equipped with a TPM 2.0 chip, Eon Desktop will use it for full disk encryption. Usually, the TPM will unlock the file system on its own without requiring user interactions. However, if we change the kernel of our system by installing an additional kernel module, these predictions will get invalidated. In return, this will require the user to enter the recovery key on every boot of the system, which is a time-consuming and annoying endeavor. Especially because the keyboard layout during this process is set to the America, yeah. layout, which might result in certain keys on a non America, yeah. keyboard to be located elsewhere. Keep this in mind in the following process. In order to prevent the user from providing the recovery key on every boot, we want to set a user-defined passphrase instead. The recovery key will still be valid after this, no worries. First, let us find out on which device our system is installed, as we will need this information in this process. Open up the GNOME Disk Utility and select the partition which shows the label LUKS LUX. Write down or memorize the device shown in the lower part of the disk utility window next to device. Open up a terminal and enter sudo systemd-cryptandrow slash dev slash disk dash dash password while slash dev slash disk is to be replaced by the very device from the previous step. Next enter the current recovery key and afterwards enter your new password. Again, keep in mind entering the passphrase during the boot process will happen in a new yeah. keyboard layer. If you now run the command sudo systemd-cryptandroll without any parameters, it should show at least two entries. One is a recovery key, so you can verify it is still there, and another one is your password. Installing the driver. Finally, we can now start installing the actual NVIDIA driver, yay! But before we can do this, I'm sorry, we should find out which driver we actually need to install, as there are three different driver series we can choose from. Find out driver version. To find out which driver we will need, go to NVIDIA's webpage at nvidia.com slash drivers and search for your GPU. Next, open up the tab all and look for the most recent driver version shown. Now, depending on the driver series, write down or memorize the following. If the driver search showed the driver series 500 or newer, memorize G06. If it was 400, memorize G05. And if it was 300, memorize G04. Next, we add the NVIDIA driver repository as follows. Open up a terminal and enter sudo transactional-update-cpkg-in opensuse-repos-microos-nvidia. Wait for the process to finish. 
Next, you may want to apply the latest snapshot using sudo transaction and update apply or reboot the system. Now that we have the repository installed, we can proceed installing the actual driver. For G06 series, you can enter sudo transaction update c pkg in nvidia drivers g06. For G05, sudo transaction update c pkg in x11 video nvidia g05, nvidia gl g05, nvidia gfx g05 kmp default, nvidia compute g05. For G04, sudo transactional update dash c pkg in x11 dash video dash nvidia dash g04 nvidia dash gl g04 nvidia dash gfx g04 dash kmp dash default nvidia dash compute g04. All commands can be found in the video description for easier access. Also, I like to mention that G05 and G04 are legacy drivers for GPUs no longer supported by Nvidia. This means it could happen that these drivers do no longer work on recent Linux kernel releases. As Eon is a rolling release, this can happen at any given time. By making this video, I can at least confirm that G05 still works on Linux 6.11.6. .6. Nvidia Optimus. If you happen to run Eon Desktop on a laptop with NVIDIA Optimus technology, you may want also to install some additional packages if the following applies to your system. First, you have a laptop with a discrete NVIDIA GPU at all. Second, the NVIDIA GPU is of the Pascal or earlier microarchitecture. In other words, if your GPU is a GTX 10 series or older GPU. Then, you may also want to install the following packages. sudo transactional-update-c pkg in bb switch dash kmp dash default suse dash prime. This is required because GPUs before the Turing microarchitecture lack proper power management on Linux, which means they do not power down if not in use by themselves. Therefore, we make use of two additional applications to manually achieve this. BB switch is in addition the kernel module to forcefully power down the NVIDIA GPU and to the prime is a command line interface to control the GPU state. Or better said, to tell the system whether it should run entirely on the integrated GPU, entirely on the discrete GPU or in the default offload mode. Only in the integrated mode the NVIDIA GPU will be turned off. If your system runs in offload mode, you can prefix any application with the following environment variable to dynamically offload an application to the NVIDIA GPU. Underscore underscore NV underscore prime underscore render underscore offload equals 1. Underscore underscore VK underscore layer underscore NV underscore optimus equals NVIDIA underscore only. And underscore underscore GLX underscore vendor underscore library underscore name equals NVIDIA. For example, running Steam on the integrated GPU but dynamically run a game on the DGPU, this can be set as a game launch option suffix by percent command percent. If you want a handy graphical user interface for controlling SUSE Prime, I recommend installing Optimus UI as a flatback application, which I personally develop exactly for this purpose and this tutorial. Fix TPM predictions. Assuming everything has run smoothly until this point, you can now reboot your system and should be asked for either the recovery key or the user-defined password. Both will work. After logging into your desktop, open up a terminal and enter the following. sudo sd bootutils unenroll dash dash method equals tpm2 followed by sudo sd bootutils enroll dash dash method equals tpm2. This will re-enroll the TPM predictions and Eon should no longer ask for the recovery key or the user password, unless the predictions get invalidated during an NVIDIA driver or BIOS update. The recovery key and the password will not get removed and will still be valid after this operation. At this point, I'd like also to mention that GNOME software sometimes does firmware updates on its own and may update the secure boot definitions of your BIOS. This process will also invalidate the TPM predictions. Therefore, if Eon should ask you for a recovery key or the password again, you may want to check the logs of transactional update if an NVIDIA driver update has occurred using sudo journalctl-u transactional-update-r and using fwupdmgr get-history. If these indicate there has been either or both things happened, then re-enroll the TBM as explained earlier. Outro. That's it, you should now have working NVIDIA drivers on your Eon desktop machine. I hope you found the tutorial helpful and we'll meet in another video again. If you have any additional questions regarding NVIDIA drivers, Optimus UI, Eon Desktop or anything Linux, feel free to reach out. I wish you a very nice day, see you soon.